So today, we are looking at how to run charts on a gig. So welcome back to Drum Electric. Today we're in for a fun one. We are gonna be looking at how to run charts on a gig and the different options that come with it. We'll be looking at the kind of things of what your options are to run charts, what are charts, why you'd run charts, and how I run charts. A side note, I'm a UK player, so all of the terminology I'm gonna be using is related to a UK-based musician. So what is a chart exactly? A chart is basically a cheat sheet. It's a piece of paper or a note that tells you how to get from the beginning of the song to the end of the song. It's as easy as that. So using charts on a gig is the best way to get from the beginning of the gig to the end of the gig without having to memorize and learn all 32 plus songs. So for example, I personally play with a lot of function bands. So this includes weddings and birthday parties and all that fun stuff. So that means that I've had to learn different sets for different bands that do different songs in different ways in a very short amount of time. So rather than learning each song in each way and memorizing it and trying to do it all completely focused, I write down all of the stuff because I don't have time to learn all of those songs. So it's a lot quicker and easier for me just to write it down. This also means that I can write it down when I'm on like a train or a plane or a boat or walking. That one's quite tough. I wouldn't recommend that one. It basically just means that I can get from A to B and confidently know what's in between. So a couple of options for running charts. So you've got the good old trusted pen and paper method. Now I've done this before. This is exactly how I started out doing this a couple of years ago. It just means that you'll have a big old folder like this. Mine says charts on the side filled with a bunch of charts. This is the perfect option if you're starting out and even just practicing is just gathering up as many charts as you possibly can. It does mean that you'll have to lug around this big folder and have a music stand next to you the whole time, but it does work. And I did this for the first year of depping in on gigs. Another option that I use to this day is actually using an iPad and an Apple Pencil. Now what you can do with that is actually scan in all of your paper charts into your iPad and then you get rid of this, gain this. There are loads of pros and cons of running either an iPad or using pen and paper on the gig. I went to an iPad and I've not looked back since. I would probably wouldn't really write out a chart on a piece of paper unless I really had to or I didn't have my iPad on me. It also means that at any point in the gig, should you get a request in, you can just quickly search it on the iPad and boom, it's right there and you know it. So how exactly do I run charts on a gig with an iPad? So I'm super lucky and really grateful that people actually tolerate my drums. So I work with loads of different artists all of the time. A lot of my gigs involve depthing at very short notice. So I need a really quick way to write clear and precise charts so I can quickly glance and look at them at the gig and know exactly what I'm doing. So here's my method of how I write charts. So what I have is an iPad Pro. This is the 12.9 inch version, the big boy, but it's also the, I believe the first or second gen. Don't need anything fancy, it does the job. It's also because of the size of an A4 piece of paper, which is crazy handy. I then have an Apple Pencil to write on this with, which is, it's a game changer. This thing is unbelievably good to write charts. On this iPad, I actually have an app called Fourscore. Now, musicians out there that do use this and laptops and other items, uh, probably already know of Fourscore or have various alternatives. It's an app that's really good, it goes really in depth, but basically you can scan in or write charts and put them in set lists. So you can skip forward and back depending on where you are in the gig or what gig you're doing. So to actually write charts that look like this as in, in note form, what I've done is actually quite easy. I've actually just exported blank notation paper from Sibelius. I put this in enough room at the top for a title and BPMs and things like that. And then just as many staves that feel comfortable enough on the actual page. So from here, Fourscore's actually got its own built-in annotation thing, which is amazing and it's incredible. From here I can do, I can just write directly onto it like that. And straight away, I can then write a, a full chart. And this is what I do for all of my gigs now. If I have my iPad, Apple Pencil, and a charger, then I can chart out pretty much whatever's thrown at me. So here's a little quick pro tip from me to you. When I write charts, I always try and write as if I'm writing it for someone else to read. This has been a massive game changer for me in the last year and a half or so, and I've learned it the hard way because I've looked at gigs and all I've written is groove, eight bars. I'm like, well, what's the groove? I've just got a tempo and that's it. 
So I've learned to always write out all of the rough groove so I can look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's it. If I have no idea what the song sounds like, because we've all been there, we've all started a gig and gone, I can't remember how this goes. So I have the tempo and I have the first groove so I can just go, what? two, three, four, and then I'm in. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what it is. And it sounds like I've, I know what I'm doing. So some additional extras you can have when writing charts. There are actually little Bluetooth foot switches that can go next to your hi-hat pedals that can switch between pages. Now, these are really good. I personally haven't used them yet. I've seen them in action and they're really, really helpful because sometimes you go and you're playing, you go and hit the iPad and then see you later, iPad has flown off the stage because you've walloped it too hard. Other things you can do, which I've seen, are alternative sort of hit pads. So it literally is two little, what looks like MIDI pads, but they're just hittable Bluetooth pads that you can just literally hit and it will turn the page as if you're hitting the drum pad. It's great. And finally, other things are actually the iPad mount. So this is actually an iPad mount that I've put onto a snare drum stand. It works a treat and this just sits next to my hi-hats every single gig. With those mounts, you can also mount them to cymbal stands or rack or any, pretty much anywhere around your kit that's accessible to you. Have an experiment, see where it's comfortable, see how you get along. So if you know of any other methods or you do something slightly differently to me, please comment down below because I'd love to know what it is. I'm always learning myself on how to run charts on a gig and the most efficient ways. So I'd love to hear what you guys do. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.